Bless you. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, so happiness, what is it? I call myself a happiness expert because I want to. It's not actually a job title. You can make this stuff up. It's great. So um, yeah, I did work for Virgin a little while ago. They gave me the job title of national lead for positive psychology. So I just kind of make up my job titles. I'm actually a clinical psychologist by profession, but happiness expert will do, or happiness professor, I think you just called me. That'll do anything. Um, and we're going to create some happiness deviants, positivity deviants in the room. I want you to all become a positivity deviant alongside me today. Whether you are already or not, doesn't matter. We're going to get ourselves there. So what is happiness? Shout something out to me. What makes you happy? Sunshine. Lovely. Chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Careful. What? <laughs> All very clean so far. Excellent. I like it. Cheese. Excellent. Lovely. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> With the unicorn. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat, you know. <laughs> we know what makes us happy. It is a thing. This word is amazing. I love it. It's one of my favorites, obviously. I've written a book about it. I'll talk about that in a while. And I think that it's something that we need to focus more on. And we might think that we're focusing enough on it, but actually we can always do more. And that's what Chris said. You know, when we're um, and we've talked about it before, when we think that something's going to happen to us, we don't know, things hit us sideways, life just occurs. If you've got that baseline level of happiness that's just a little bit higher, we're much more likely to be resilient and deal with whatever life's got to throw at us. So personally, I think it's really, really important. However, there are those people out there, and I wonder whether there are any amongst you that are a little bit cynical about this word happiness. Do you know anybody that's cynical about happiness, either yourself or somebody else? Anybody that might be a bit, mm, yeah, some nods in the room. No, those, those pessimists out there, you know who you are. You might be married to one. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, quite a few of you are. <laughs> so there is a word, does anybody know what it is, that is the fear of happiness? Do you know what that word is? It's actually a thing. You know what the word for fear is? Phobia. Right. Phobia. Cherophobia. The fear of happiness is actually a thing. Now, I'm going to describe what, what it is and why people fear happiness. Because you might be like me sitting here thinking, what? Why would you be scared of happiness? What? Ha why would that happen? So picture this. You're watching a film. You're all in the auditorium. There's a film showing. And on that film, there's a lovely scene of, let's say, the Canadian Rockies, somewhere really beautiful. It's really sunny, just like it is outside today behind these big, thick blackout curtains. <laughs> there's happiness out there somewhere. Um, so picture the scene. So Canadian Rocky Mountains, it's sunny. There's a car with a family in it. The family, they're just the most beautiful family in the world. Mum and dad, I'm going to be just really stereotypical here. Mum and dad, they really get along. They're looking at each other lovingly in the car as the car's winding through the Canadian Rocky Mountains. The music's playing softly, really nice classical happy music. The kids are in the back, two kids, brother and sister, let's go with that. They get on really well, as all children do. And they're playing really nicely together and they're smiling at each other. Wonderful, joyous moment. The car's winding through the Rocky Mountains. What happens next? Crash. Right, yeah. Any, anything else? Any, any advance on crash? <laughs> yeah, fireball. <laughs> Avalanche. Some kind of disaster, right? Why is that where all of, all of your minds went there? Why did that happen? There's a, <laughs> yeah, right. Socialization, Hollywood experience, whatever you want to call it. But it's not necessarily true. That thing right there that you all experienced is called foreboding joy. Foreboding joy is the assumption that if you're too happy, something bad has got to happen. Therefore, that leads to cherophobia, right? That's why people are scared of happiness. So your wonderful pessimists at home, you can go and give them a lovely cuddle later and say, I get it, I get it. <laughs> you think something bad's going to happen. But... The science is that just because you're happy doesn't mean that bad things happen. In life, we have ups and downs and everything else in between, no matter what. Bad things are going to happen anyway. 
I know this is a happiness talk. It's great, isn't it? Bad things are going to happen anyway. But it doesn't matter. If you're happy in the meantime, that is better for your mental health and your well-being. So my argument is always to not be scared of happiness, to embrace happiness, to find happiness moments anywhere we can. And we're going to talk about a little bit about how to do that. So you tell me again, let's have a shout out, how much, or tell me, tell me if this is true or false to start with, you are born happy or not? True or false? True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Pardon? Okay, interesting. It's kind of true and it's kind of false. So you're all right. Yay! <laughs> That's how we generate happiness. Everybody loves to win. You will win. So it's kind of true and kind of false. So we are, whether everybody can see this, our happiness. I'm going to draw a pie chart because I like pie and it will be lunchtime soon. Apparently, if you can draw a perfect circle, you're crazy. I probably shouldn't say crazy. I'm a psychologist. That's not right of me. <laughs> I'm not recording this. It's fine, isn't it? All right, brilliant, excellent. <laughs> there goes my job. <laughs> um, I didn't draw a perfect circle, so I'm totally fine, by the way, clinically. Um, so your base, you are born with a baseline level of happiness. So to some extent, your happiness is innate and it's already within you. That amount of your happiness accounts for 50%. So 50% of your happiness, you can thank your wonderful parents for. You can send a little text message or pray them uh, if they are no longer with us and say, thank you, folks, for the 50%. You will know whether in the great scheme of life and everybody else you've ever met and everybody else out there on the planet, where you kind of fare or rank in terms of your baseline level of happiness. Some people are just naturally more optimistic or more positive, right? Others have to work at it. So 50% baseline happiness. Can't do a lot with that because you are what you are and that's your genes. However, we have another 50% to play with, so what's this about? How much do you think that the context impacts your happiness? So what goes on in your life? What happens to you? Things that happen to you through no fault of your own. How much of your happiness do you think that impacts as a percentage? How much? 20. 25, 20. Okay, you're all sitting around there. Okay, actually, I've got good news for you all. This is another yay moment. It's actually only 10%. Yay! Another reason to be happy. Only 10% of your happiness is impacted by life events. Now, it might feel like it's more because when something hits you hard, whether it's good or bad, you win the lottery or you lose your job or anything else in between, it feels like it's more because of the weighting of that experience, but it's only actually impacting your happiness 10%. Good news. What is the rest of it about then? 40% of your happiness is still unaccounted for. So what's that about? Attitude. Amazing. Amazing. You are all positivity deviants in the making. 40%, a whopping 40% of your happiness is completely up to you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and so on and so forth. That was like love actually, wasn't it? And you. Um, <laughs> I've got the mic so I can do the dance thing. We are going to get you dancing later, by the way, just to let you know. And that's not a joke. Um, so 40% for <laughs> of your happiness is down to you. So why on earth would you not use that? Why would you leave that be and not do anything with it? To me, that would be crazy. That would be the perfect circle, people. You've got 40% of your life that you can do something about to make yourself feel well and good and happy and positive and hopeful and all those wonderful emotions. Huge, huge. So how do we do it? Well... I am a huge fan of something called positive well-being, which anybody who knows me in the room, and I know there's probably about a third of you that I already know or have met, or we're stalking each other on LinkedIn, or whatever the appropriate word might be for stalking each other on LinkedIn. Um, so you know that I'm quite obsessed with positive psychology, 
which is the model that I use that Chris mentioned. That's what I talk about a lot. So I'm just going to briefly um, kind of introduce positive psychology to any of you that might not have come across it before. Who has heard of positive psychology and would be brave enough to, in a nutshell, describe what it is? That second part of the question stopped anybody's, hey! <laughs> it's like, I've heard of it, but no, you had me. Go for it. That was a very specific response and is definitely a, a, a huge part of what positive psychology is. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Anybody else want to give us any more to positive psychology? Give us another sentence? No? Excellent. Good. Okay. Don't want to make you sad. Want to make you, this is all about happiness. So I'm not going to make you speak. So positive psychology was uh, developed by a guy called Martin Seligman, who's an American chappy. Um, it's only about three decades old. So in psychological terms, it's actually quite new, really. Because when you think about Freud and cognitive behavior therapy, all the behaviorists and all the theorists and um, people that came way before Seligman did, they're actually quite old models of psychology. And they're brilliant. They're very useful. You know, you, you go and you have a phobia, not of happiness, ideally. You have a phobia, you have a round of CBT, 12 sessions, and you're sorted, maybe. Who knows? But... Positive psychology is my passion because it's quite new and because it's focused on having a good life rather than being focused on symptoms. So let me explain a bit more. Oh, by the way, Martin Seligman, the reason apparently he came up with positive psychology is because his six-year-old daughter asked him one day, Daddy, why are you so miserable all the time? <laughs> I mean, what better reason to come up with a whole model about being happy and well? So... If I were to put positive psychology on a spectrum, let's say that this is a mental health spectrum, and your mental health down here is zero, and that's really, really bad, the kind of worst you've ever felt, feeling awful, don't even want to get out of bed and, and do the day. Ten is, I'm totally bouncing, everything's great, that's the best I've ever felt, and five would be obviously somewhere right in the middle. Um, five would be kind of existing, I guess. So there's no big problems, but you're also not shouting about anything great in life either. So traditionally, we, we live in a society whereby we are bound by the rules of the medical model. Now, I'm not a medic, and I have a lot of respect for medics, but I think that every medic I speak to does agree with me that this medical model can actually be quite um, detrimental in some respect. And let me explain that. If, so you shout out again, what kinds of things would you go to your GP about? I'm not asking for your own personal ailments. <laughs> Just an example will do. <clears throat> yep. 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 Yeah. Good. Nice and specific. I like it. People normally just say bad things. <laughs> Kidney stone. Excellent. <laughs> so, yeah, we go to our GP because we've got a problem that we want, ideally, to be fixed or helped, right? So you tell me what would happen if you went to your wonderful GP and said, hello, doctor, I'm, I'm all right. I'm feeling quite good, really. I just want to make sure I continue on my happiness journey. What would your GP say to you? Next. <laughs> exactly that, exactly that. And that's not because your GP is awful, it's because that's not what they're there for. It's because we are not socialized to maintain happiness. We're socialized to wait until we fall into the pit of despair or kidney stones. <laughs> and then we are trying to clamber out of it and that's when we get help. So that's what we've been socialized to wait until we dip below the five and then this is where we contact our GP and this is where we seek support. Positive psychology, pleased to tell you, is all about wherever you're at on this spectrum, let's try and motivate ourselves to just reach the next level. So if you're a two, we get to a three. If you're a five, how do we get to a six? If you're a nine, how do you stay there? Because a nine's pretty good, to be fair. Um, and if you're a 10, then how do you make sure you stay there too? So positive psychology is for everybody, and it's all about 
How do we maintain our happiness no matter what hits us? Now, there's a lot of, I love the brain. I'm a bit of a brain geek. I did a neuro, cognitive neuropsychology master's once upon a time, and even just being able to say that was part of the assessment, <laughs> being able to write down what I was actually doing. And, and it was fascinating because I learned all about the brain, and what I loved most about it was what is happening in our brains when we're happy. Now, I want you to all just give your the left temple a little tap, just this bit here. This bit here, this is your... You can get people to do anything, can't you, when you've got a Britney <laughs> life <laughs> There's absolutely no reason for me to get you to do that whatsoever. No, there was. This is your left prefrontal cortex, right? That's where your happiness centers lie. Amazing. Yeah, give it a tap. It's like, oh, wake up. Hello. <laughs> so this is the bit that lights up when you're doing something that makes you feel joyous or energetic or happy or hopeful. So we get people wired up to fMRI machines and um, brain imaging machines and things like that. And that's what we see light up when people are doing something um, that they like. So it's really simple. All we need to do is make these brain areas light up. You don't have to be wired to a machine. You know when you're feeling happy, you feel it. You feel a rush, you smile, you laugh, all the things that you're doing today. So it's just about picking those things and knowing what it is that you can do in a moment to make yourself feel that way. Because you change the chemistry in your brain. I think, personally, that is one of the most amazing things that we, as human beings, have control of. We have control over changing our brain chemistry. Wow. Do we do it often or not? No. We just go through the motions in life. We get up, we have a big to-do list that is never going to be checked off, by the way, which for somebody like me that likes checking things off is an awful realization, but there's always going to be things to do. And we just go through our days and we keep going and we work hard. And I used to work clinically with um, people in old adult services, what they nicely called it. Um, it was over 65s, which is quite shocking, really. And what they taught me was that at the end of your life, you don't look back and think, oh, I wish I'd worked harder, or I'm, I'm glad I stressed a lot. <laughs> you look back at your life and you think, I wish I'd focused on my happiness a bit more, or other people's happiness, or I wish I'd left a positive legacy, or something like that. And I've never forgotten that. And it's so easy because all we need to do is to give up the, that little prefrontal cortex a little tap. And I don't mean you tap your left temple and then you're happier. I mean, you might be. There's, the whole, there's a whole NLP in that. <laughs> but what I mean is you find your moments of joy and you do those more. Just for 60 seconds or two minutes, if you're doing something that, that energizes that left prefrontal cortex and activates the, core, the, the um, oxytocin or the serotonin or the dopamine, the endorphins, whatever happy hormone you want to focus on, that's a talk for another day, <laughs> then that's what you've got to do. It's really, really simple. So it's what are your mood boosters? What are your mood boosters? You think of something now that lifts you and you can all think of something. You know what those things are. I'm going to do something with you now to get everybody energized and feeling happy, because it is so easy to do. And this is one of my favorite ones. So if you've ever been on a, a workshop or webinar with me that's online, you won't know this, but I'm going to tell you a secret. What I tend to do is in the break, I will whack on a song and I will dance around like a insert inappropriate for clinical psychologist to say word <laughs> around the house and energize myself, increase the happy hormones, and then I sit down and it's like nothing ever happened after the break. Or I send people off into their breakout rooms to do something and then I, I do my uh, mood booster. So we're going to do it today. But there's more to it. There's more to the... We're, we're going to have a little bit of a boogie. You're going to get us ready. Um, now, I have a book, and I know I say that in a funny accent, I know, before... <laughs> before John sh shouts at me in the most lovely way. Um, I have a book called Free Happiness, and it was published last July, so it's fairly new. I'm very proud of it. It's doing its thing around the world um, and helping people to feel better. But it's accessible to everybody, and I know some of you in the room have, have got it already, so thank you so much for your support. And I'm going to give this one away to the best dancer in the room. <laughs> 
Now, if you want to, you can sit and be miserable, but nobody will want to be your friend. So at least get up and just smile and be in the joy of the moment. Turn the lights down. No way. We've got to see this. We are videoing. It's all fine. Embrace it. Embrace it. Are we ready? Get on your feet, everyone. Come on, let's do this. Move around the room. Hold on. Do the best dance song. Oh, oh. I think that we all have to agree the worm has it. Round of applause to the worm. Thank you for embracing life. I promise, promise has an asterisk that this might not actually be true, that you will live longer for that, sir. <laughs> you will definitely be happier and you spread joy in, in the world, I am sure. Thank you so much, everybody. I am, my time is done. Um, not forever. That sounded really morbid. If you want to talk happiness, I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. LinkedIn is my main uh, place to be. It's Dr. Vicky Barnes. You've been an absolute joy. Thank you for allowing me to talk about my favorite topic ever for 20 minutes. And I'll get to chat to you all later, hopefully. Thank you very much.